In this video, we're going to predict the dominating mechanism based on three examples. Previously, I've released individual videos on SN1, SN2, E1, and E2 mechanism. I've summarized all of their factors that favor each mechanism in this table, and we're going to put this information to good use. Deciding which mechanism will dominate is one of the challenge an Orgo student will encounter. I have a quick and dirty way of figuring out which pathway will dominate based on a given condition. Basically, if we look at the condition in this order, we'll be able to sort out the dominating mechanism. We start by looking at the type of the substrate that's given, and then we look at the strength of the nucleophile or the base, and then the type of solvent that's given, and then lastly, whether heat is involved or not. So let's test this out using a few examples. Our first example, we have water added to 1-bromo-1-methylcyclohexane. Which mechanism will dominate? The first question is the type of substrate. It's a tertiary alkyl halide. That means we're going to rule out SN2 because tertiary alkyl halide is too sterically hindered for an SN2 to take place. Next, the strength of nucleophile or base. It's water which is a weak nucleophile and a weak base. So therefore, we're going to rule out SN2 and E2 reaction because these two prefer strong nucleophile or strong base. Next is the solvent. H2O is poloprotic and that's conducive for SN1 and E1 reaction because these two reaction forms carbocation. So poloprotic solvent is going to be conducive for that. And lastly, to decide whether SN1 or E1 will dominate, we look at the last condition, which is the temperature. Since there's no heat indicated, that means SN1 will dominate over E1. We're going to get a mixture of products from SN1 and E1. However, the major product that is formed is going to come from SN1 mechanism. Let's try another example. We have methoxide in methanol added to 2-chlorobutane at high temperature. Which mechanism will dominate? 2-chlorobutane is a secondary alkyl halide. So this doesn't rule out any mechanism because it's possible for all four mechanisms. Next, we have methoxide in methanol. So methoxide is stronger than methanol. So therefore, methoxide is going to behave as a nucleophile or a base, whereas methanol is going to behave as a solvent. Methoxide is a strong nucleophile and a strong base. Therefore, we're going to rule out SN1 and E1 because these two mechanisms only requires weak nucleophile and weak base. Next, methanol, the solvent. It's polar protic. So that means E2 is going to dominate over SN2. Let's keep going and we look at the temperature next. Since there's heat indicated, so that means confirm E2 is going to dominate over SN2. So we're going to get a mixture of products from SN2 and E2. However, the major product is going to come from E2 mechanism. Let's go for our final example. We have sodium iodide in DMSO added to chlorocyclopentane. Which mechanism will dominate? The substrate is a secondary alkyl halide. This doesn't rule out any mechanism. Next, we have sodium iodide in DMSO. So that means iodide is the nucleophile or base and DMSO is the solvent. So iodide is a strong nucleophile, but it's a weak base. So therefore, we're going to rule out SN1 and E2. Because SN1 only needs a weak nucleophile and E2 requires a strong base. Since we have weak base, we're going to rule out E2. Next, we look at the solvent DMSO. It's polar aprotic. That means it's more favorable for SN2. Now we keep going and we look at the temperature. Since there's no heat indicated, that means the temperature is low. So confirm SN2 is going to dominate over E1. So we're going to get the major product coming from SN2 mechanism. With that, we're done predicting the dominating mechanism for SN1, SN2, E1, and E2. I have other videos in this series. Do look for them in the description box below if you're interested. Here's a video that I've handpicked for you. Do check out our app that's available in both Google Play and App Store. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. If you find this video helpful, be sure to like and share it with someone. 
Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you won't miss future videos. Your support means a lot to me.